everybody. Thank you for coming to, do, to this session. Uh, today we'll see how to develop an internal DSL in Scala. Uh, do you know what domain-specific language is? Basically, it's a language built within a host language. It's a language that is tailored to a given domain. In this case, today we'll see the currency domain. We'll see how to build uh, money objects, which are made up of an amount and the, and the currency. And uh, how to build this DSL so we can perform operations between, between these money objects. Okay. I use, of course, TDD, where T stands for types, not for, not for tests, okay? <laughs> Okay, let's create a package object. The first thing we'll do is, is defining some type aliases. Can you see the, yeah, okay. Can we the light, it's okay like this? So I'll define some type aliases for this. The amount, which is a double. I'm joking. You don't, you want, don't want to deal with floating point arithmetic when you deal with money. It's a big decimal instead. Big decimal. And the currency that will be a type of itself. OK, currency. I just find two currencies for the scope of this session. Of course, in real, in real world application, we'll define all the currencies. Object. Okay, is object euro extends currency and I don't know dollars currency. Okay. The next thing we'll do is defining the the money class. Class, okay, money. Okay. If you have any problem and you can't see what, what I type, I can make it bigger. So just, just tell me. Yeah? Like this. Amount and currency. Okay. We start by defining our API. by defining our API as a, as a simple API, and then we'll turn it into a DSL. So we'll see what are the Scala features that let you transform a, a classical API into a, a, a real DSL. So we we'll define operation. The, operation. the first operation we'll define is add. That, well, <laughs> that makes you some two money objects. It takes another money object and returns a money object. So now here, the problem is, if I want to sum two money objects which, has, uh, which have the same currencies, there's no problem. You sum 10 euros to 20 euros, you get 30 euros. But we want to be able, uh, in, the, in this DSL, to sum money with different currencies. So I want to be able to sum 10 euros to $10. Of course, I, I will have to convert uh, one currency into the other first. So by convention, we say that the operation, the operator on the right will be converted to the currency on the left. So if I sum 10 euros to 10 US dollars, I'll convert US dollars, 10 US dollars to euros, and then I sum, and the result will be in euros, okay? So at this stage, we realize we need other 
other entities, other, other, other types. Uh, we need something that, a map, for example, that will make me convert between the, the two money objects. Go back to my package object, where, I define, where you define type palaces, generally in Scala. So I'll define the rate, which is the rate, the conversion, the exchange rate, basically, as a big decimal as well. And the rates, which is just a map from a currency to another currency, and it produces a rate. Listen, here I used a tuple to represent the from currency to currency. But since we're using a, a statically typed language, it would be better to be explicit and define a, um, a, define a class where you explicitly say from and to, who is from and who is to. So I'll define a conversion class. Call it conversion, but not conversion. Okay. Right, let's make it bigger. From a currency to another currency. Okay. Back to our type alias. I'll say explicitly map a conversion to a rate. Okay. So now here we can pass this. Well, actually, I'll use another. It's better to use another wrapper class at this point that uh, encapsulate the, the conversions. So define that will give me the rate, the exchange rate. So a good name could be, I don't know, exchanger. Okay, exchanger, it just takes the rates and has just one method rate from currency. Okay, I say if the currencies are the same, the, conver the conversion rate is just one, of course, from one. Else, rates conversion from two. And now we have all we need to complete this method. I have the exchanger. Exchanger. Okay. Here, I'll get the rate first. Oh, sorry. Rate. Listen, Scala has a decent type type inference, but I like to use type annotation because when you you uh, you you look at your code after six months, types help you to to to, to go through the code. Okay, it's equal to exchanger rate. So we said from the currency on the right to the currency on the left. So from I'll explicitly use named parameters here because they have the same type. And this way we we can we can see clearly where go where what go where. Sorry, from from that money dot currency to this currency. Once you have the rate, it's an easy task. You say money, we build another money object. So we convert that amount 
plus multiplied rate amount plus rate and currency the current currency listen you don't need the parentheses here because of course multiplication has a higher precedence but I prefer to to be explicit about this so time to write a test I don't use test driven development religiously. I mean, I don't write the test first and then, but you know, tests are important, of course. So let's try. The first thing I'll do is define here a, an exchanger that I will use throughout the, the tests. This way, uh, this is okay, even if we use, if we made up the, the conversions because it's used to, to verify our, the, our code correctness. So the exchanger, exchanger, the map, map of conversion. I say okay, from euro to US, US dollars, it's uh, I don't know 1.2. Of course, it's not real, but it's not important either. Conversion US dollar. So right, the first the first test is money. Ten euro. Add money. Twenty euro using the exchanger should be money. Thirty euro. Okay. Let's see if it's true. Test. Quite, quite fast, quite quickly. Uh, they are improving the Scala, the Scala com compiler. So, this test passed. The other, of course, the other tests, of course, passed because there's nothing to test about. So, up to now, we wrote, we wrote our API using the classical approach. But this is not a DSL. We want to be able, instead, in, instead of this one, we want to be able to write it like this. I don't know, 10 euro plus 20 euro should be 30 euro. Wouldn't it be nicer this way? Hmm? There's no exchanger inside, no money inside, and you build it like this. You pretend that the int class, this is an int, the int has a, an anonymous method where you pass the currency. Let's see if we can do this in Scala. As a, as a spoiler, we can do this, otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs> okay, listen, I write here the, as a comment, what are the Scala features that uh, slowly will uh, will bring us to that to that result. Will take us to the result. <coughs> so the first one is symbols as methods. In Scala, you can use symbols. Of course, some people over exaggerate. You you, you can see things like this that really exist in Scala, and it's. Uh, but you know, if you if you use it sparingly, it could be. A good, a good add-on. So I, instead of add, I use plus. Plus, actually, in Scala, this is not like in C++ an operator overloading. This is really a method. Internally, Scala will translate this, I think, in dollar plus or dollar dollar plus, something like this. So symbols and as methods. And another things I want to show is optional dots and parentheses for RIT 0 and RIT 1 methods. That is 
method that takes no parameter, that method that takes one parameter, but already was more like, uh, you know. Okay. Uh, this means that, let's see this in a shell. No, you can't see that. Anyway, it means something like this. In Scala, when you do 10 plus three, what you're actually doing is a syntax sugar for this one. So the optional dots and parents was really about this. It's the, this is optional and this is optional too because the method takes ju just the method plus of, cl of the class in takes just one parameter. So we we're not over yet, of course. We need to provide the int class. No, first of all, we need to remove, or better, to pass this exchanger that will uh, will use it uh, all over the places for all the operations we're going to define. We want some. We want to be able to pass it implicitly. It's not a global variable. It's different because the compiler will hit you in the head if it doesn't find the implicit parameter at compile time. So there's no runtime failure. So this is simple and bring us to the third Scala features that makes it a, that makes it a DSL friendly language. What makes Scala a DSL friendly language. The third one is implicit parameters. So let's transform this exchanger to an implicit parameter. Okay, now from now on it will be accepted implicitly. Anyway, if we go back to our test, of, of course this is still red. It doesn't compile yet because we need at this point to provide the int class with the with the methods which has that has no name because this is if it was like this foo okay we 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 would have to provide the int class with a foo method that accept the currency but we want this a method uh, an anonymous method a method that can be used in a function like syntax scala will let you do both things, of course, as we'll see here. That is, extensions. We want to extend the int class, after all. Extensions using implicits. Implicits are all, all over the place in Scala. And function-like syntax for apply methods. I'll make myself clear in a moment. In Scala, if you have a method in a class or in, a, in an object that is named apply, you can call the, that method using apply or using the function like syntax we've seen before. Let's do this by defining to the extension of the, of the int class. Implicit class int ops operations for int private val x int. This, don't pay attention to this extends any val because it's just optimization. I do it automatically by now. Def apply, the apply method takes a currency, currency, and build a money object given by x. See, x was a big desk in amount, which is just a type alias of big decimal, but here we'll be promoted to big decimal. By the way, at this point, I want to extend to do the same thing. Copy and paste is bad, don't do this, uh, uh, this at home. Double, we want to, to, because we want to be able to build also objects like 10.5 euros. So we'll provide double with this method as well. And the same thing for big decimal, if you have something that is already big decimal, big decimal. Okay, 
So let's go back to our test. You see that it automatically it compiled. Of course, this doesn't compile anymore. Let's see if the test still passes. No, of course. Plus, I cannot find PC. Oh, OK. That's right. Uh, listen, I didn't try this so many times because I wanted to, to have some problem here so we, we can see it together, of course. It, uh, the compiler complains that uh, it can't find the implicit value for exchanger I promised it here. I say, okay, I, I can't find in the scope the implicit value. This is because here I had defined it as a val. It's enough to say implicit val. And now, and it doesn't work anymore. Okay. So, we are almost done. We have this syntax, 10 euros plus 20 euros uh, plus 20 dollars. And ten. Ah, by the way, let's sum between different currencies. 10 euro plus 20, oh, 10 US dollars. So US dollars should be 18, 18 euros. Should, should be 18 euros. Let's try that. If it's all green, OK. So the conversion works too. Just to make things more interesting, let's add some other operations here. OK. So we'll see another Scala feature. And this Scala feature is, of course, doesn't, uh, it's not about DSL. The Scala features that were about DSL are this one. With just these features, you can build, as you, as you, as you've seen, uh, pretty, uh, pretty awesome DSLs. Uh, let's go the minus, minus here. So, these two methods are, we can say, the same from an, uh, raising the abstraction level one step. This, these two methods are the same. And we don't like, as good developers, we don't like repeated code. So, what I want to do is write a uh, and a method that will uh, be abstract enough to be used to rewrite them in terms of this method. Since Scala is a functional programming language too, it's a, it's a hybrid, but I don't take it to account the object-oriented uh, part. It's a functional programming language. We can use higher order functions. A higher order function is a simple function that takes or and or return a function as a parameter. So, let's define this private, def, perform, I call it perform operation, that money, the operation, which is a function, a binary operation, an operation with two parameters, of course, from two amount to one amount, the implicit ray exchanger, sorry, and we'll return a money object. Basically, I can copy any of the two and modify it accordingly. So instead of minus here, I have to use the, the function I'm passing. Uh, operation amount. At this point, I don't need this parenthesis anymore. OK. And let's see how can we can write the other two in terms of this one. That two becomes perform op that, and here I can pass a lambda. You use a lamb, you use a, the underscore in Scala. This is uh, it, it means the first parameter minus the second parameter. We, it, it creates a lambda of this type. And the other one will be transformed this way. Perform op that underscore plus underscore. This is the plus operation. Let's see if the test still passes. What time is it? Okay. okay. So it still works. OK. 
Okay, so let's define also multiplication and division. Of course, in this case, we multiplicate by an amount. We don't multiplicate 10 euros multiplied by 10 dollars. Doesn't make sense. Amount. And here we don't need the conversion because we just act upon the amount. So I would be money, money amount. Multiply that amount currency, and then the division is the same. So let's add some more tests. Some the difference, say thirty three euros minus ten euros should be. Mm, 23 euros. Okay, multiplication. Mm, 10 dollars multiply 3 should be 30 dollars. And division also. Okay, 10 euros divided by 2 should be should be 5. Okay, let's see if the test still passes. Okay. The last operation I want to implement at this point is the two operation, which, which just converts this money object into another currency. So, that currency... Here, I need the conversion, the exchanger, actually. Exchange, okay. Exchanger, exchanger. Money, okay, get the rate as usual. Rate, which is a rate, just big decimal, exchanger, rate. I want to convert from this currency this time to that currency. Okay? And this is the rate. Once we have the rate, we convert. We multiply the amount, this amount to the rate by the rate and use that currency, which is the result of the conversion. Let's add this final test, this conversion. I say 10 euro to USD, 10 euro to USD, 12 euros, if I do, did the math, 12 euro, correct, <laughs> so 12 US dollars, US dollar should be, Yes. As I said before, Scala, if you have a one, uh, um, an arity one, a method that takes one parameter, uh, lets you use optionally dots and parentheses. So this thing, this guy here, can be written, of course, this way too, which is, I think, nicer. In, when you're using a DSL, okay? So, we went from this to this. Which is, I think, faster and nicer. Let's see if the test still passes, okay. This is, to sum up, Scala has the, follow, the following features that make it a DSL-friendly language. Symbols as name. You can use symbol as names. Optional dots and parents, as we've seen before, for RT0 and RT1 methods. Implicit parameters, so you don't need to pass the parameter as I did here. 
but it can be passed implicitly as long as there, there's an implicit value in scope. The, scope, the, implicit the algorithm for the implicit resolution in Scala is so complex and out of the scope of this talk, of course. Okay. Anyway, it looks in uh, the, uh, the first the first uh, uh, um, point where it looks is in, uh, of course, in the scope, in, in, uh, in the internal scope. Then it will go in, in the companion object of their types and so on, and, and until it reaches the the point where it didn't find the implicit and it gives you an error like uh, like before. So implicit uh, parameters extension you can extend any existing types in Scala without opening the, the source code. Of course, they wouldn't let me uh, do a pull request in Scala to, to say add the currency to the int class. I think it would be practical. And the last thing is the function-like syntax for apply methods. I don't know if this is clear, but this thing here, this guy here is the same as this. And the test still pass because if, if the name of the method I repeat it is apply, you can use the, a function like syntax. Okay? So if the is there any question on anything? Time error for what? For a uh, constraint of the DSL. I mean, like you said, you can't apply. If you want, if, if, if you want to restrict to yeah, to the same currency. Yeah. Ah, yeah, you can you can do it. Yeah, you could you could do it, but because the Scala type system is a, is a really good, so you can push it. It has a, some form of dependent types, so you, you can push it uh, to the limit to to do many things at a compile time. You can even do a quick sort at compile time, at type level. So it's, a, it's something that uh, it, it's, it's complex, but it, it's doable. And anyone else? I built, I, this is a nice question because I'm, I, I know I shouldn't say it in a DSL talk, but I'm not very keen to use DSL unless it's something small like, like this one. Because, uh, you know, also the, the testing library I'm using, Scala Test, is uh, built using top of it, a DSL, as you can see, should be, this thing are, are should, in are all things of a DSL, but if the DSL is, uh, grow, uh, grows quickly, you, you, you will have, you will find yourself uh, studying another, a, a different language within, within uh, an already complex language like Scala. So, there are many DSLs. Everyone is writing their DSLs, and you find yourself using another Scala library, learning another language because they, you have to to to, to go inside the head of the the, the the person that wrote the DSL. So if it's something something smaller like this, I'm okay. I say, I say okay. Uh, there are there is no problem in learning something like this. This is just the language. It's a very small language. 
But if, if, if the language, start, the DSL, the domain specific language starts growing exponentially, then you, you don't, the user doesn't want to learn another language, just to use your library. So I tend to, to use a DSL only if it's within a certain limit. No, no, no uh, I, I haven't because for the reasons I said before. For one reason, the, for, uh, the, the first reason is that there are already DSL to, also for testing. There's this otherwise, um, sorry. Uh, for example, there's the Cornicon, I think it, its name is. You can test uh, REST, uh, REST uh, services. And it's a DSL that lets you test. Uh, these, uh, these REST services. There are a lot of DSLs, and I, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't love, uh, I don't love them unless they are very small. Uh, so this talk, uh, I decided to, to do this talk about DSLs to show that Scala can be used at any level, at any level. The previous talk, uh, the last talk, uh, I gave was at Scala Italy, and I talked about monads, okay? Here, I didn't want to talk about monads to show that you can use Scala even if, you don't, if you're not interested in, in, uh, in studying things like functor, monads, and so on. I'm not saying that they are not useful. I, I love them, and they are very useful to write very abstract code, to a very abstract and very reusable code, but you can use Scala even if you don't know what a monad is, because during the whole talk, I didn't name monad at all. It's a vast language, so you can, you can choose how you can use it, but it's a very powerful, it, it has a very decent type system. It has higher kinded types. There are not so many languages that has higher kinded types. It's Haskell, uh, and, and some others, but uh, having higher kind of types let, let you define the, the, those concepts that I was uh, talking about before, so monads, functor, and so on. In, in the other languages, you can, uh, you have uh, monadic types, like you have a list, which may have a flat map, which is a monadic uh, interface, let's say. But you can't uh, capture the monad concept, because it's uh, something that can be can be done only if you have a higher kind of type in a in your type system. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you.